So we, as humans, do a lot of experiments on each other. Sometimes maybe not the right way. Sometimes the right way, though. I've got an example here of questionable. Up in the air, I'd like to know your thoughts on this particular study that was done by one Dr. Darmon Spears, who, for the first three years of his son's life, spoke to his son, son only in the language Klingon. <laughs> and uh, he would sing the lullaby for uh, his son in Klingon. He often would sing the imperial anthem. Klingon is a, a language that is actually spoken mostly by people who aren't huge fans of Star Trek, but who are huge fans of languages. There's a beta version of a Duolingo course in Klingon available at <laughs> sure. Duolingo right now. Sure. Um, as you might imagine, Klingon isn't a super robust language, so it doesn't have a ton of words for things that we have. For example, when this man would say to his son, uh, it's time to go to bed, turn out the lights, instead of saying, turn out the lights, he would say, make it dark, <laughs> which I thought was pretty great. Good. That's, that's, Good. that's as close okay. as he could get in Klingon, which is a very klingon neat way of saying things. The child, throughout this experience, uh, was also spoken to by his mother exclusively in English. So the idea that this linguist had was, it's fine for a child to be spoken to by one parent in one language and the other parent in the other language. This happens frequently. So I don't think that I'm going to hurt my child by doing this. I don't necessarily think I'm going to help, but I think it is an interesting <laughs> thing to try and do. First of all, what do we think of that? So until you mentioned that the child was also being spoken to in English, I had some alarm bells going off. In yes, my head. same. Um, <laughs> there's an episode of Radio Lab called Words that uh -huh. goes into the importance that language has in creating our ability to think. Mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of people will ask the question, uh, "What, what would I think if yeah, I, if I didn't have a language? language?" And the yeah. answer seems to be, "You wouldn't think." You would think, but but yeah, not the same. W I think the same, not the same thought ways. Like you'd still have feelings and emotions and reactions. So I was thinking that that by speaking to the child in, as you said, a not very robust language, mm -hmm. would severely limit the child's ability to have complex thoughts in adulthood. Also, worryingly, Klingon, pretty violent <laughs> species <laughs> of of people. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I wonder if just learning to speak in Klingon, if maybe it would make you be interesting, so interesting thought, if you now would be a little knowing, more confrontational. Now knowing the dynamic of yeah. the actual situation, I'm less worried about the child mm -hmm. and more worried about the relationship between the child and the father long term. So interestingly, the child obviously was exposed to more English than Klingon because mm -hmm. the child talked to talked in English to not just the mom, but also to all other humans, mm -hmm. and also the TV, and etc. So the child understood Klingon, but mostly didn't speak it. Uh, eventually, the child uh, started to disengage from Klingon, and then one day, uh, whenever his dad would speak to him in Klingon, the child would just turn away. <laughs> and so he stopped and went to English. Because the kid was like, I do not like... <laughs> This you're weird and like we started to not have a good relationship. I don't with his appreciate dad. being experimented on. <laughs> Please I'm stop. I'm curious like what exactly the the mental thought process was in the kid at that point. Yeah, like, me too. Uh, yeah. Was it that he was having a deteriorating relationship with his father because of this thing, and so was more so turning his back on his dad than the language, or was it even like that he felt that the that the dad and the language was kind of an alienating influence from his like social development. Mm -hmm, like you mm -hmm. could feel like everyone else in the world is like this and you are different, daddy. Why are you different? And daddy was like, oh, sorry, I'll be less different now, which is not a choice that every dad gets to make. I, uh, my thought is similar, but less more to the side of like, uh, like not why are you weird, like, please be less different, and more the sense of, like, what you are doing to me is weird, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, well, like, does he know that it's th that it's being done to him so yeah, much as know. just, like, that this I is the know. way that my dad is? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, don't, know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. what three-year-olds think. Yeah. But 
this child is now a teenager uh -huh. and cannot pick a Klingon word out of a lineup. So it did <laughs> not make him a... He was a fluent speaker of Klingon when he was three years old um, in that he could understand all like all the Klingon words that he was said to him, but uh -huh. he does not speak Klingon now. Mm. His dad still does, though, because he's a super dork. <laughs> they interviewed this kid about, like... What's your relationship with your dad like? And trying to I, no, tease out. How, how you doing developmentally? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I just... Do you yeah. feel okay? Yeah. Yeah. I will also say that the mom was also behind the idea. Uh, she was she was super on board on for board it, which is it. just a foreign idea to me. I feel like if I was like, hey, honey, I've got a great plan. <laughs> Catherine. I'm just going to go to full Klingon with our child. Like, it would be a really, really tough sell. I feel like he couldn't have done the experiment if she wasn't on board. No, Because yeah. he could, yeah. like, squirrel the child away and, like, whisper to him in Klingon <laughs> and then <laughs> return him to his mom. Yeah. I, I feel like I can imagine Catherine's face... Oh yeah. <laughs> We've all seen that face. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this snippet of Holy Fucking Science. If you would like more, you can see the full episode at youtube.com slash holy fucking science. That's right. Holy Fucking Science is a podcast about science that is not for children. It contains mild violence, swearing, alcohol consumption, and sometimes the science isn't super vetted, so don't share it in the classroom. For more Holy Fucking Science, we are on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play Music. Also other places where you might be able to find podcasts. Thank you for watching. Thank you.